clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods with excellent schools. Clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods with excellent schools. Uh, I'm hoping that I, I, as I continue to do these shows, somebody's going to watch this stuff and we're going to get this done. African Americans, we got to stop this killing, this killing in the city of Chicago. Stop these destabilized neighborhoods, the murder, the crime, the foolishness. And it all comes down to parenting. I know we need jobs, but we need some parenting too. And, uh, you know, a lot of African Americans, they make excuses for the parents. I know the parents, you know, some parents are better than others. And all parents wish they had been better parents with their children and grandchildren. I understand that. But a lot of parents are some of these. I'm in Auburn Gresham right now. I don't know where Inglewood starts. This is Auburn Gresham. And a lot of parents need support. And I, I, my understanding, because I don't go deep into the hood. I don't go deep into the homes of these neighborhoods. <laughs> although I live here. I stay in the house. You know, I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm basically a loner, people. I'm a loner. I want to be left alone. I really, I just do my little public access show and uh, and leave me alone. <laughs> if you call me, you catch me in a good day in a good mood. I will, I will talk to you. If you call me, I will talk to you. I, I do run my mouth on the phone, although I'm a kind of a loner. And so, well, look at that. You see that? Uh, I can't know if you can see the light. The uh, man, the police light. There it is. The blue light, special light. And so, uh, clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods with excellent schools. Clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods with excellent schools. This is what it's all about. And the, and the mothers, I understand the mothers and grandmothers are hurt. A lot of them, not all of them. Not all low-income low African American women need help raising their children. I, I understand that. But uh, some do. They hurt. Alright, this is St. Sabina over here. St. Sabina. Let me go in the front of St. Sabina. I gotta drive around uh, over here on Troop. Uh, well, maybe I drive around. I should just pan back. I don't know. I gotta drive around on Troop over here. 79th and Troop to see St. Sabina. That's where the great Father Michael Flager is at, if you will. St. Sabina. Uh, clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods with excellent schools. It comes down to families. It comes down, it really comes down to resources. Uh, uh, Salim Wakil from WVON Radio always talks about that. that that the African American community needs a Marshall Plan, a Marshall Plan to marshal some money to help us with our issues. I'm, I'm, and just really the low income African American neighborhoods because we here in the hood have been abandoned. We are part of the abandoned class of African Americans. We've been abandoned. Well, let me go to the alley here. We've been abandoned. Right, let, me, let me go through this alley. So I got that term from uh, Eugene Robinson from the Washington Post, he says uh, the low-income African Americans, he, I'm paraphrasing what he's saying, we're part of the abandoned class of African Americans. Here's the church. That's St. Sabina. Let me back. There you go. St. Sabina. Reverend Michael Flager. Pastor Reverend Michael Flager. St. Sabina. The famed St. Sabina. Now, Reverend Michael Flager is a white guy who's one of our strongest black voices in the, in the African American community. <laughs> Ain't that wild? And of course, the St. Sabina School has a St. Sabina Church. See, the Catholic Church, they smart. You know, they got, you know, the church, the school, the hospitals, and the cemeteries. They got, you know, from cradle to grave, and they got it locked up. The Catholic Church. So, uh, I was saying that Reverend Michael Flager is one of our strongest black voices, although he's a white guy. Yeah, he's one of our strongest black voices here, African American voices here in the city of Chicago. Because most of the black preacher, preachers, not all, but most of them are big pimping. Big pimping preachers, and they just out for the money. And here we are. Because it's the church, you know, Elijah Muhammad said, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said years ago, that if we can just get to Christian church, mean, meaning to do what they're supposed to do, our job will be done overnight. It really, I think this is a dead end here. Let me turn around. All right, made the wrong turn. Now I'm back on Racine. I don't know, 76th, 75th and Racine? So we're rolling through here. So I was saying, uh, Eugene Robinson from the uh, Washington Post said we African Americans in places like Auburn Gresham here on the south side of Chicago, we're part of the abandoned class. 
uh, meaning that we have been abandoned by the upper class African Americans, the elite African Americans, the, uh, the middle class African Americans, the black bourgeoisie. We've been abandoned for good reasons, and here we is. Here we is. So, and, so that, and that's where the problem is, especially, I don't know about your neighborhood, in, in Chicago, that's how we've been abandoned in, in Chicago by all the other African Americans. So we've been abandoned by all the other African Americans, so here we are. So it's going to take somebody else, it's going to take uh, uh, human beings with, human beings with more money, more wisdom, more knowledge, that's going to help us in the hood solve this problem. We, we, those of us in the hood don't have the, the intellect and the wisdom and knowledge to solve these issues. And it really comes down to parenting. Parenting, parenting, parenting. Folks make excuses. They don't want to hear about it. It's about parenting, people. Parenting! You, you have better parents, better schools. I mean, better parents, better students, better schools. This is very basic. This is not hard, people. But if the foundation is parents. Better parents demand more from this, from themselves, from their children, their grandchildren. Demand more from the teachers and the schools and the principals. And here we are. We have a better neighborhood. Now, I'm rolling through, y'all. You see the police way down there. See the police? The police way down there. Unless it stop somebody at traffic stop. So I don't know where Inglewood starts and uh, Arm Aggression ends. I should have got to you the borders. I'm like 71st Street, 72nd, 2nd Street in uh, Loomis. Kitties are going to school. Yeah, the police must, let me pull back here. The police must have pulled somebody over. Oh, I can't, well, I can't get the focus right. All right, don't worry about it. That's the police. Yeah, the kitties are going to school. I didn't want to show the school and show the kids, you know, and get permission to do that, but I forgot what school that is on 71st and, uh, I should know the name. I used to know the name. The school on 71st and Loomis. But the point is that most of the kitties in the public schools in Chicago, only 12% are college ready. Only 8% actually uh, complete their college education in their early 20s. That's the reality. That's the raw reality, people. Man, I don't even know what street I'm on. I'm just rolling. So, uh, so what was he? The, ba the bottom line is that, and I, I, I told myself don't say the bottom line. Clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods with excellent schools. It really comes down to parenting. Um, it really, you, we, it's, it, the foundation is very basic. We have to tell our little girls and little boys, teenagers especially, if you will, <laughs> teenagers, to delay having children. Please, delay having children. Wait until you're older, 25 or 30, before you have these kids. First thing. Okay, if the kids show up early at 15 and 20, then you, we need some early childhood development. Early childhood development. Early childhood development. That's what we need, okay? And after we get the early childhood development out the way, then every child should read at grade level. Read at grade level. So every child should read at grade level. So if you got a, you know, kindergarten, four, four, you know, second, third, first, second, third, fourth grade. This is very critical because the kids got to read and write by at least the third grade. Otherwise, it's just bad news, people. They got the statistics. They're building jail cells off of these statistics. So, so you have to read at grade level. It's like paramount. It's like duh. So, you know, your, kiddie, your, your little boy and little girl is going to grammar school. They have to read at grade level. If they're not reading at grade level, get them help. Help. Ask the teacher. Ask the principal. Somebody. So the, the onus is up. The onus is on the mom and grandmama because they they have a you know, the, the men have abandoned their children for a lot of different reasons, and you know it's complex. But uh, mama, grandmama, make sure your, your 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 son and your grandson reads at grade level. Your little girls read at grade level. Please read at grade level. Damn. I, I, and I know people make excuses. They say, well, Mom, Mark, you know, you understand the mom and the grandma, can't, they can't see that the, their kids read at grade level because they hurt. They're in a lot of pain. They've been abused, despised, and rejected. And so they really can't help their son and daughter become grade level because they at work all day. And, and the kids are latchkey kids, and, and they on their own, and they're carrying a the weight. They, they're the father and the mother. They say, they say, Mark, you got to be compassionate. You got to understand uh, the black woman is up against so much. 
they, they're up against so much. Well, that's why you tell little girls not to have the babies, because you're going to be by yourself more than likely. 70% of all black women are single. Over 70% of black kids are born out of wedlock. And it's going to be that way for a while, because we, uh, you know, it's going to be that way for a while. we got to deal with it. Here's a school over here. I, never, I ain't never seen this school in my life. Philip A. Randolph School. Now, Philip Randolph was, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the union dude, right? See, I should know my black history. I'm taping this during Black History Month. So, Philip A. Randolph was the uh, union dude. I think he was the poster union dude, right? <laughs> but he worked with Dr. King and all that kind of stuff. Uh, man, I should know my history. Philip A. Randolph School. Okay, let me go around. Most of the public schools in the city of Chicago in the African-American community, about maybe half the students, I mean, roughly half the students are doing pretty good and the other half is struggling. On, on the average school, some is maybe 30% are doing well. Some schools, 60-70% of the students are good, doing well. So that's, 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 you know, that's the public schools. But there are public I don't know about this school, but there's kids in these public schools. Maybe this one, Philip A. Randolph on the south side. They're not struggling. Who needs some help? So it's about clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods, or excellent schools. It's about helping these low-income African-American mothers and grandmothers, because the fathers have abandoned their children for a lot of different reasons, to help them raise their children so they can read at grade level. Raise mannerable children who read at grade level. Raise mannerable children who read at grade level. I'm on, I'm on Damon Avenue. I told y'all this years ago. When, it, when I was a kid, Damon, this was all white, all day and all night. But the European Americans on, on Damon Avenue here, uh, this is like 77th of Damon. 77th of Damon there, 79th of Damon. They all gone. I remember it was white when I was a kid. White. And some people say, well, Mark, the Latinos are going to move us out of Chicago. Well, they're going to move some of us out of Chicago. Big freaking deal. That's a whole other story I've talked about before. There's always demographic shifts. And that, go, that goes back while we have crime in Chicago because so many people, stable people, left Chicago. So we have a lot of destabilization in these neighborhoods. And the good people in some of these homes, they stay in the house like me. They say, man, I don't want to get in the mix. I don't want to get into the, rig the rigmarole and the riffraff. But m most, of, most of the residents in the African-American community are good people. Most of us do, do the best we can with the children we have. We really do. And, and uh, you know, Mayor Rahm Emanuel was famous for saying that 25% of the kids in the public schools, the students in the public schools, won't amount to anything. That's harsh. And 25% is a high number, but I understand what he's saying. Because uh, we don't have the resources to catch everybody so they won't fall through the cracks. The kids gonna fall, and it's not necessary. That's why I'm begging people to really, uh, hold on. I'm begging people on this TV shows to, uh, people should join an organization that's mentoring and tutoring young boys. Mentoring and tutoring young African American boys. Minister Farrakhan said something like that at the Million Man March. That was like 20 years ago, whenever it was in the 90s. He said, go back home and join an organization that's improving their community. So all these black folks, we had these killings in Chicago. And everybody moaned and bellyache for a couple weeks and they go back to doing what they've been doing. But I challenge people, what organization that you are, are supporting monetarily, money monetarily, uh, and uh, physically, through human capital, giving the, uh, giving the uh, organization your time. That, that, that group that is mentoring and tutoring young boys. So that's what it's all about. And, I always, and I, I'm on the uh, internet all the time posing that question. You African-American men, especially the men, the few men we have, because most of the men are, you know, dead and in jail and destabilized, unemployable, unemployable, unemployable. Uh, most of the men are uh, unemployed or unemployed or unemployable. I get that at some point. They're going to let me go. <laughs> I mean, oh, I'll be unemployable at a certain age, uh, depending on my skill set. I get it. But uh, African-American men and, and women, but especially the men, what organization? I, I, pro I, you know, I promote the Black Star Project, RAGE, which is the resident, I forgot, the Resident Association of Greater Inglewood. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, Asia Butler's organization. She's great. And Cyron Smith. Cyron's always on the show. Cyron Smith's, Smith's Black Club University. He don't want me to say that, but the Black Club University. 